Hey everyone, this is Three Questions with Jasmine Vasilius and Leslie Garrison. Let's go. So pumped to have you here today. All right, I am actually with Jasmine Basilius and Leslie Garrison, who are both a part of Fruitvale. Is it is it Fruitvale? What is it? School is it, district. School is just school district, right? Like because the school district has like this and this, and so I actually will be joining you all in Fruitvale. So I'm excited to talk to you, and I've been uh, we've been doing some pre conference notes and just kind of having conversations, and I just stop Leslie dead and say, please stop talking. <laughs> Because I need to capture some of this because you're doing really amazing things there. So I, I, I the more the more you talk, the more excited I am uh, to be with you all. It seems like you have an absolutely amazing staff. Uh, yeah, and you're is it? Would you say you're Central California? Is that like is that accurate? Right. Mm -hmm. So we got. I remember going to Central California years ago, and I remember like cows and stuff. I'm like, cows in California? Is there, are we do we have cows there? Is that a thing? Sure. Yes, we have cows. We have lots of agriculture and oil. Right, because I grew up a hardcore Lakers fan, and they never said anything about the cows when I was a kid. So that was like, uh, you know, so I was like, that wasn't really kind of the Showtime era was showing the cows in California. So I, I'm really excited to be with y'all. I've been in Central California several times. It's an absolutely wonderful place. But before we get into uh, the longer podcast where we're hearing, uh, you know, you, you have a real amazing focus on literacy, the work you're doing with MTSS. Really, to be honest with you, I'm, I'm keynoting the California MTSS conference. I started asking you questions to make sure I know what I'm doing. So, um, <laughs> I, I, and you really helped me with that too. So I can't wait to talk more about that conversation. But um, in the in the pre-conference, we were talking about um, the idea of, you know, who's a teacher that inspired you? Who's an admin that inspired you? And both of you basically said, well, it's actually the same person and you didn't even know that. So we're going to just kind of combine those questions into one. And uh, Jasmine, if we can start with you, um, that question of like, who's a teacher that inspired you? I know it kind of has an admin link to it. So if you can share that story, we'd love to hear it. Sure, absolutely. So when I was in junior high at Fruitvale Junior High, I'm a Fruitvale grad. So I work in the district I attended as a student. Um, I was at the junior high and I had a teacher named Bill Jager who was amazing. And he uh, taught me in junior high. And actually the year that I was there, my father passed away. His wife came to my house, very supportive of me over the years, very good family. And then later, much later in my life, I became a teacher. And when I was assigned to my school, my principal was the same person. So it was really cool to be working for someone I admired so much and respected so much. And I just remember first day of school, first year teacher at that school came into my classroom first thing in the morning and there was a bouquet of flowers on my desk. Like you're going to do great. Have a great year. Um, it was awesome. Lots of support. He was very visible. His presence was always there, but he was not very, um, he was quiet. He was like a quiet leader who led by example. And I could just see what I wanted to be in him all the time at all the different stages of my life. And so he still is the person I think about when I do work because I always want to make him proud. You, you literally, when you told that story, the first of all, I gotta give a little <laughs> shout out, little shout out there. So when you, you told that story, I started, I started getting a little, which <laughs> I wasn't ready for that. So, Aww. um, it was a very, you know, and you just think about all the teachers in our lives that have connected with us in really hard moments. And you realize that teaching is so much more than what it kind of shown in, in the world today. So I just. I got nothing to add to that. That was an amazing story. So I appreciate that. And Leslie, you said you have similar kind of connection that you have like a teacher who is an admin who really inspired you. So who's that story that you want to share? I had a sixth grade teacher named Diane Dalton, and she had an uncanny way of connecting with every kid. I came from a very small town, lots of different backgrounds, and she connected with every one of us. And I felt like I was her favorite student, but I am confident that everyone in my class felt like they were her favorite student. And she just pulled things out of us that we didn't know we had. And it was because she built those relationships and she really got to know who we were as little humans. And I had the privilege of working in a district here in Bakersfield. And I was going through the admin program, considering administration. And I called my district office to see if I could go observe some of our principals. And I didn't realize that she was in my district, off, er, in my district at that time. And so I had an opportunity to reconnect with her as a principal and spend a few days observing her. And she made me feel that same way all over again as an adult. And um, she gave me the best advice I've ever received in my career, which was, you know, your values, you know, what's important and stick to that, be yourself 
and you won't go wrong. And so I've always hung on to that and not tried to veer from that. I love these stories. I got to give a little shout out there too. So I'm like, I'm getting a little emotional. I don't know if I didn't get enough sleep or what's going on here today, but that, that's, <laughs> those are really powerful things. You know, um, I actually just did a solo podcast on uh, tips for, 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 for getting a job. And one of the things that I talked about, and it kind of, Leslie, when you brought this up, it reminded me is when I applied for an admin position, uh, I was told by my um, mentor, who is my principal, she eventually became my superintendent, um, that when you're applying for that job, look at the leadership standards and show how as a teacher, you're already meeting those standards. And so mm -hmm. like when you're talking, both of you, when you're talking about the people who have had an impact on you, it's a reminder that like leadership is not reserved for admin right? It's anyone who has a willing, uh, who has the influence to help others, you know, move forward in a positive direction. So it just really shows how leaders are in so many different places. So I'm glad that you both. And the weirdest thing, if anyone's listening here, they both had the same person and neither of them knew that just so you know, before it was like, Hey, we have kind of the same person for both answers. So um, I absolutely love that. So Leslie, I'm gonna start with you on this question. Um, because you're the superintendent, and I think a lot of times the superintendent is perceived as you just kind of appeared in that position and you didn't really, you know, like nobody really knows your journey. I think there's a lot of stumbles along the way, a lot of things we've learned and we've grown. So when you could go back to your very first year of teaching, if you can go look back at those points in your career, if you could go talk to yourself, what advice would you give to yourself then? Settle down. I was so eager. I was a mathematics teacher in a junior high and I was so eager to do everything right and to grade every little thing and just be perfect and that's just not realistic but I was so passionate about what I was doing so I would go tell myself to pause and smell the roses and enjoy it a little bit more um, not that I didn't enjoy it but I really put high expectations on myself that were almost not obtainable mm -hmm. and I, I can't you know I love that you're sharing this because I know that your staff is probably listening to this right now. So uh, probably that's a very um, releasing thing for them, if that makes sense. Like, I, I know, like, that's, I don't know. I, I'm a little shocked that's a superintendent answer, but I love it. I think that's a great one too, because I think a lot of times it's so much pressure and it's like, you gotta do this mm -hmm. every single day, every day. It's like, no, actually, you know what? Sometimes you just need to kind of step back and that's where we actually make some of the best progress is when we step back and, you know, take some time and then, are fully able to commit to what we're actually doing. Jasmine, what would that advice be for your first year teacher self? Um, I think it would be somewhat similar. I would, I would encourage myself to work smarter, not harder. I worked really hard and tried to do everything and be everything for everyone. And I got exhausted and I felt tired and um, it was, it's so hard. I resonate with, you know, that all the time, how hard our teachers work because it was a really hard job. We're asked to do so many things. And I feel like at that time, um, I would have just told myself again, very similar to what Leslie said, but perfection is not the goal. You know, every connection, every relationship you're making has a bigger impact than you realize in the moment. Um, I didn't realize that I was making those connections until much later in my career when I was invited to weddings and baptisms and different things. And at the time, you know, you're <laughs> stressed and anxious and worried and running to the next thing. And I wish I had just realized at the time that, you know what, my impact is far reaching and I don't really know how that's happening. It's just because my heart's here and that's good enough. It's good enough. And um, just do your best and it will be enough. You know, so the whole reason this podcast started, like these specific ones, uh, is actually to remind um, educators their impact that goes beyond generations, right? Like it's one of the reasons I always ask um, you, like who's a teacher inspired you? Because we kind of, sometimes we do think this and I'm guilty of this too, is that like we're the generation that's gonna change everything in education. Like we're finally gonna fix all the problems we've been talking about, but you know, we've had amazing people doing stuff for years. And so I think your stories, your advice really tie, tie into this. I will tell you, the more I talk to you all, the more I'm excited to, to join you, which is why I love kind of doing, cause we're gonna have to do a meeting anyway. I might as well record it and make a podcast out of it. So like, it's a great <laughs> way for me to learn about you all, but. I know, um, I know you weren't really excited at first to come on, but I'm, I'm so glad you did. So it, it really means a lot to me. I can't wait to see you all. I can't wait to, to learn more about your district. 
Um, thank you everyone for listening. Jasmine, Leslie, thank you so much for being on. Thanks for being here. We'll see you all soon.